Hey guys, it's my joy to welcome you today to Cascade Kids. Now, we are continuing our series called Experiments in Faith. And it's someone says about experiments. Oh, wow. Okay, so, so I think we have our doctor. Now, now, tell me your name again. Dr. Heinzendorf. Dr. Heinzendorf. Now, you're here to do an experiment, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this I cannot wait to see. Let's, let's see what he's got today, guys. Well, children, today we will be doing household item experiment called the gassy balloon. The gassy balloon. Oh. Excuse me, I am <laughs> gassing myself today. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if I like this experiment so much. Okay, so... Sorry. The gassy balloon. Yeah, da, da. Okay, so okay. To begin, you will need white vinegar, yeah? White vinegar. Now, you yes. do not want to drink this. No, no, no. No, no. this Definitely is yucky, not. yucky. Yes. Next, you will need baking soda. Now, this is not soda you drink like Coca Cola or Sprite or Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Today, this is the baking soda. This is it is like powder. You see that? You see, you see? <coughs> yeah, we see it. Yeah, this is baking powder. soda. Next, okay. you will need empty water bottle or Coca Cola bottle as long as it is empty and plastic. Yeah. All right. All right. Next, you will need balloon. Balloon. Now, this is something you want to stretch. Yeah. And it needs to be. The size of your eyeball, yeah? Arr, like a pirate, arr. Next, you will need zwei funnel. That what? means two. Oh, two. Two funnels. Two funnels. These do not go on your ears. These are not trumpets. Do, 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 do. These are funnels. Yeah. Okay, funnels. All right, this I cannot wait to see. All now, right, so what are we going to do with all this stuff, doctor? To begin, you will open the bottle. Take off the top. Okay. Next, you will take your funnel, your funnel. first funnel, right. stick it in, bloop, just like so. Now open the white vinegar. Oh, it does not smell good. It is stinky. Oh. Next, you will put it in the funnel to get it in the bottle, about a third of the way of the bottle. Yeah? So let's go. Do, 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 do. That's about right. Oh, oh no. Oh. That is definitely not a third. That's not a third, but no worries. You can stick the funnel back inside the vinegar and adjust however much you might need. All right. Mm, too much. It is about right. All right. Next, you can close the vinegar and put it away, but don't throw it on the floor. Now take your balloon, yeah, and take your second funnel, yeah, and stick it inside the top of the balloon. You see that? That way, once we pour the baking soda in this funnel, it will fall inside of our balloon. Oh, wow. Okay. This is, this is getting cool. All right. Oh, I can't wait yeah. to see it. Nah, now, you don't want too much, just enough to where about a third of the balloon is full of the baking soda. Yeah, look at that in the air. Let's see. Is that about right? Do we need a little more? We need a little more. Just, just kind of do this, maybe? It'll help uh, it go down. Oh, there. Yeah, it, yeah. Oh, yes. you're right. See, I, 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 I'm, I was meant to be a scientist, I guess. I don't oh, know. you, you yes. should come to my laboratory sometime. I can do that, doctor. Yeah. Very good. Now, this is the final step of our experiment. What you will do, children, is you will take the top of your balloon and wrap it around the top of the bottle, you see? Just okay. like so. Oh, nice. there it is. Now, all we have to do next is flip the balloon and hold it up so that the baking soda goes inside the vinegar. And what's going to happen? Oh, we will find out. Okay. <laughs> um, should I stand back? Am I good here? Oh, you should be okay. So okay, stand okay. I'm now, ready. on the count of drei, which is three in Germany, okay. we say eins, eins, zwei, zwei, und drei. Und drei. That is right. That's pretty good, wasn't it? Oh, good yes. job, Master Okay, okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. On the count of drei. Eins. Eins. Zwei. Zwei. Drei. Drei. Flip it over. Watch the baking soap. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> no way. Look, the balloon is filling up. Wow. Look at that. The gas from the chemical reaction causes a chemical reaction of gas to blow up the balloon. Wow. I did not blow it up. 
I didn't blow it up either. That is so cool. So, so doctor, yeah. that is a cool experiment. Thank you. But what can we learn from it? Well, that is a good question, Pastor Keith. What we can learn is that just like the balloon grew and grew and grew because of the pressure added because of the baking soda to the vinegar, what that means is we can learn from this by wanting to grow in our faith. Yeah? Once we add God or the Bible into our lives, it is meaningless unless we grow in our faith by trusting God every single day. Wow. That is an awesome experience, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Ah, uh, well, thank you for having me. And children, if you want to do this at home, make sure you do it with your mommy, your daddy, your grandpa, your grandpa, not your doggy or your kitty. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not your doggy or your kitty. Yeah. Well, have a good day, and I will see you next time. Ta-ta. Bye bye. Wow. What a great experiment that was. And guys, it is always so much fun to... Hold on just a minute. Ethan, what are you doing? That is so disturbing. Listen, I'm in the middle of our lesson oh, right now. Oh, I'm so sorry. Look, yeah, uh, what are you doing with the balloon anyway? I just passed my uncle in the hallway. He gave me a balloon. Listen to this. That's, you, you have such talent, I'm telling you. It's amazing. Oh, thanks. Well, well listen, I tell you what. Since you got a balloon, yeah. that gives me an idea. You want to play a game? Sure. Uh, I have a balloon, too. Let's, let's play a game. Okay. And I call this game the Great Balloon Race. Oh. Now, this is going to be cool. Have, have you ever, you've blown up a balloon before. Yeah, yeah. I just heard it, so I figured you did. <laughs> yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a game, and here's what you're going to do. Okay. You see this blue line right here? I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay. But we're going to take and blow up our balloon. All right. Both of us. We'll stand behind that line, and okay. the object is you can blow it up as big or as small as you want. Huh. The object is to see how close you can get it to the finish line ah. over here. All right? Does that sound like fun? That sounds like fun. All right, let's give it a try. Let's do it. Let's come over here, right yeah. here. So you'll you'll go first to so blow it up. Oh, he's going he's going for the extra. Oh yeah, extra. All right, and fuel. then you let it go whichever way you want to go. Here we go. What? Wow. I think I went. Okay. Back, <laughs> I think, so. Yeah, I did. I do. All right, so I'm going to try it. All right, give it a go. Uh-huh. What? Yes. Yes, I win. I finally won one. This is amazing. Oh, man. Now, now, Ethan, wasn't that fun? Yeah, that was fun, but what's the point of that? Okay, here's the point. I'm glad you asked. Um, Ethan, a lot of times in our life, when we share our faith, when we tell people about God's love, we never know how they're going to respond. Some people may choose to accept God. Some people may not. And it's kind of like this balloon. It can go all over the place. But here's the important thing. God wants us to share our faith with everyone. Oh. And so that got me thinking. I've got a really cool story that Jesus told from the Bible that I want to share today. Oh, cool. Now, it's the story of the sower and the seed. Oh, well, so, hold on. Do you need any help today telling the story? Wait a minute, wait a minute. The story's about a seed. I mean, you know, how, how are we? I think I, I have an idea. Uh, if, oh, if, no. if, if, you're, if you want me to help, I, I got an idea. Uh, and since you've got an idea, I, how bad could it be? I'll be right All back. Right, let's give it a shot. This could be interesting, guys. So anyway, our story today comes from the Bible, and it's from the book of Matthew, and it's Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 23. Now, guys, the Bible has two parts. There's an Old Testament and a New Testament. Well, Matthew is in the New Testament, and it's the first book of the New Testament. And this is a story that happened to Jesus. Now, let me kind of set this up for you. Jesus was teaching a big group of people when all of a sudden he decided he was going to tell a story. Now, this story was called a parable. Now, parables are earthly stories that have a heavenly meaning. And he tells a story about a farmer who went out to plant some seeds. Now... Hey, Pastor Keith, oh. how are you doing tonight? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't think this was going to be such a great idea. Oh, right, I'm a hold. seed. You're a what? A seed. A seed. <laughs> yeah, I'm a seed. You know, I'm... this is the first talking seed I've ever talked to, so Ooh. Mr. Seed, you're, yeah. you're going to help us with our story today. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens. All right, so, again, this is from Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. 
So a farmer goes out to plant some seeds. He scatters them across the field. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The first set of seeds fell on the footpath and some birds came <coughs> and ate it up. <coughs> okay. I'm scared to even go to the second seeds. But the second set of seeds fell on shallow so soil under light with underlying rocks. All of a sudden, they sprouted up real quickly. But because they didn't have deep roots, they withered away and died. <laughs> okay. Then there was a third set of seeds. The third set of seeds fell among the thorns, and they grew up, and they were choked out. But fortunately, there was a fourth set of seeds. These seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop 30 to 60 to 100 times more than had been planted. Oh, yay! Fertile soil! And when Jesus told this story, he said, everyone with ears should listen and understand. But it's kind of confusing. What does this parable actually mean? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I know what this means. You know what it means? Yeah! Okay, I want to hear it. So, let's break it down. So, that first, the first set of seeds, right? Okay. They fell on the footpath, and the birds came and ate the seeds. Right. That represents people who hear the word of God but choose not to accept it. Wow, that makes sense. Yeah, there we okay. go. All right, what about the second set of seeds? Okay, so the second set of seeds fell amongst some rocky dirt. Right. Okay, they grew quickly but then withered away. That represents people who hear the word of God and accept it. But as soon as the going gets rough and problems come their way, they fall away from God. Wow, that makes sense too. All right, what about the third set of seeds? The third set. Oh, okay, so that's when it falls amongst the thorns, right? Yes. And the plant withers away because it got choked out. Well, that represents people who hear the word of God and accept it. But once the problems of life come and the desire for more and more and more money, they fall away from the word of God too. Wow. Okay, so what about this fourth set of seeds? I'm glad you asked that, Pastor Keith. So just like the seeds fell into the soil and produced plants and crops, like you said, a hundred yeah. times, that represents people who hear the word of God and accept it and grow in their faith and grow in their faith and tell the whole world about God. Oh, my goodness. Ethan, that's fabulous. Well, you know what? That, that got me thinking. Um, there's a lot of things in the world that grow. Yeah. Plants. Um, animals, yeah. and even people. Yeah. But unlike the experiment that the doctor did earlier, it usually doesn't grow that fast. It um. grows over time. And you realize that we can grow too. We can grow in our height. Yeah. We can grow in our age. Yeah. We can grow in wisdom. Strength. And strength. And we can also grow in our faith in God. And guys, that's what this story is all about. God wants us to grow in our faith with Him. But you may be asking, well, wh what does it mean to have faith in God? Yeah. Ethan, how do you have faith in God? Well, there's a couple of simple steps that you can follow so you can begin your relationship and learn how to have faith in God. And so that first step is just admitting that you're a sinner. Now, if you've never heard that word before, what that means is, You've messed up. You told a lie. You did something you shouldn't. And the Bible tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I've sinned? Oh, yeah. You've sinned? Definitely. What about our moms and dads? Especially. Yeah. And, and, and even the guys and girls that are watching? Yeah, you've sinned too, even if you don't wow. realize it. Wow. But you know what? There's good news because the second step is we have to believe the only way we can be forgiven of our sins is through Jesus Christ. You realize that Jesus came and walked on this earth and never sinned, not one time. Whoa! Ethan, get this. He didn't disobey his parents. What? He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He never sinned. And because wow. he didn't sin, what he did was he took our place and our punishment. Oh. And because of him doing that, he wiped away our sins. 
But there's something you have to do. You have to choose to invite Jesus into your life. That's not something that we can do for you, your parents can do for you, your brothers and sisters. It's a choice that you have to make. You just have to say, God, I need you in my life. And if you would like to do that today, we can lead you in a prayer right now. Absolutely. And here's the thing, guys. What makes this prayer special is that you mean it in your heart. And so I'm going to say a prayer. And if you say, hey, Pastor Keith, I know that I have sinned and messed up. And I know the only way I can be forgiven of my sins is through Jesus dying on the cross. And today I want to make that choice to ask him into my heart. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. You can say it out loud or you can say it in your heart. It's totally up to you. But let's pray together. Dear God, dear God, I know that I have sinned. I know that I have sinned and done things and done things against you. Against you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for sending your son Jesus. For sending your son Jesus to die on the cross. To die on the cross and take away my sins. And take away my sins. Today, today, I ask you, Jesus, I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life, to come into my life and forgive me of my sins and forgive me of my sins. I love you. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, we are so excited for you. <laughs> There's a couple things we want you to do. The first thing we want you to do is tell your mom, your dad, your family, let them know you prayed that prayer and ask Jesus into your life because that's amazing. And we want to celebrate with you guys. So please also let us know here at Cascade Hills Church because we want to talk more about that decision. We are so glad you guys chose to join us today and we can't wait to see you next week. Have a good one.